In this video, I'm going to share compelling evidence to support a fascinating and bizarre idea, which is that NNDMT, one of the most powerful psychedelic compounds on Earth, is mysteriously interconnected to the topic of UFOs or UAP. Now, as strange as it might sound to link a psychedelic substance to unexplained phenomena in Earth's atmosphere and oceans, this discussion is based directly on modern academic research. For example, this here is an article titled An Encounter with the Other, a thematic and content analysis of DMT experiences, in which researchers surveyed DMT experiencers, and 94% of the sample reported that during their DMT experience, they encountered otherworldly beings or entities. In about 40% of cases, these entities were specifically identified as aliens, leading the researchers to state Possibly the most comparable experience to DMT in content and structure is that of alien abduction or contact experiences. The mystery of DMT entities is something I've discussed at length in previous videos. Who or what are these entities? And is it just a coincidence that so-called alien beings are associated both with DMT and with UFOs? Maybe so, but the mystery deepens when we consider that this connection here is nothing new because DMT has been used for thousands of years in the form of ayahuasca. And incredibly enough, did you know that UFOs and otherworldly beings feature prominently in these ancient cultures and these ancient indigenous groups? This is exemplified in the artwork of artist Pablo Amaringo who was an ayahuasca shaman who's well known for painting his ayahuasca experiences. And we can see in numerous of his pieces objects which appear very similar to UFOs. And in fact, Amaringo has explicitly identified these as spacecraft and vehicles for sky beings, which may take many shapes and can travel underwater or under the earth. I mean, is this not incredible? How can we explain this and what is going on here? There's a case to be made that there is an ancient connection between non-ordinary states of consciousness and encounters with UFOs and non-human intelligence. In this video, I'm going to attempt to shed some light on this mystery, again, using modern academic research. Specifically, we're going to draw from two bodies of research. The first is the DMT research of world-leading expert Dr. Rick Strassman, and secondly, the pioneering research of a man named Dr. John Mack, a psychiatrist who pioneered the academic study of people who claim to have made direct contact with a UFO or non-human intelligence. This raises all kinds of huge and important questions and truly has the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the nature of reality. So let's dive in. So my name is Jonas. Welcome back to a channel all about psychedelic education and consciousness exploration. The mission here is higher consciousness, which is really what this video is about because this exploration can help us to open our mind to a greater reality. Now, just to set the stage, it's useful to acknowledge that here in the year of 2024, UFOs and UAP have increasingly been the subject of serious discussion all around the world. I mean, here in the United States, just over the past few years, the U.S. government has formally acknowledged having a top-secret UFO research program, declassified multiple UFO videos from official military sources, published a congressional report acknowledging dozens of unexplained UFO or UAP incidents, and held historic, unprecedented congressional hearings in July of 2023 where we saw three credible individuals publicly testify 
under sworn oath that UFOs, UAP are very real and need to be taken seriously. We have to ask ourselves, I mean, what is going on here and why is this all coming out now? This could easily be one of the biggest stories, one of the most significant turning points in all of human history, and it demands investigation in an open-minded way, right? The connection between DMT and UFOs take this, takes this whole investigation to another level. So for years on this channel, I've been sharing my fascination with DMT because my own experiences with this substance helped me to evolve. I never would have learned or really known about DMT if not for this man right here, Dr. Rick Strassman, who I had the pleasure of interviewing on this channel a few years ago. I've already shared a lot about his research in previous videos, but just briefly, over the span of five years, Dr. Strassman conducted an academic study of DMT where he administered hundreds of doses of DMT to over 60 different research participants, then documented his findings in this book, DMT, The Spirit Molecule. This was truly groundbreaking research that helped us understand the nature of these DMT experiences. And Strassman identified a number of characteristics or features of the DMT experience that consistently are reported all across the board, which include a rush of energy and vibration as the experience begins, a subjective sense of consciousness separating from the physical body, movement through a tunnel or a portal, breaking through into another reality beyond space and time, arrival in an intensely vivid, hyper-real world of light and color, encounters with beings or entities, gain of knowledge and insight, and universally these experiences are transformational in nature. People are profoundly affected by these experiences. In his research, Strassman carefully collected and documented case reports from people about their DMT experiences, many of which he shares in this book, DMT, The Spirit Molecule. And here's just one example. I quickly blasted through to the other side. Suddenly, beings appeared. I was in a huge infinite hive. There were insect-like intelligences everywhere. They were in a hyper-technological space. There was a being helping me. It was very intelligent. It wasn't at all humanoid. I now have the feeling that there's something more that I can't access in my daily life. I guess it's the feeling of having made alien contact. Are these really all just hallucinations in the brain? I mean, we know from research that over 80% of experiencers say their encounter with this other reality, with these beings, felt even more real than this lifetime. After hearing enough of these perplexing entity encounters, Strassman states, Despite my better judgment, I now feel compelled to weigh in with my opinion regarding the experience of contact with alien life forms. He goes on to state that DMT experiences bear striking resemblance to the accounts of so-called alien abductions and says, how can anyone doubt after reading our DMT accounts in these last two chapters that DMT elicits typical alien encounters? In order to explain why that is, Strassman specifically references the work of Dr. John Mack and discusses Mack's research into UFO contactees or close encounter experiences. And as I'll share in a moment, it might truly surprise you just how many similarities and parallels we find in these two data sets. But let me just first share a word on Dr. John Mack. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning author and professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School who pioneered the academic study of people who claim to have made direct contact with a UFO or non-human intelligence. Now, as a psychiatrist, Max started from a skeptical perspective that these reports of UFO abductions, close encounters, must be explainable as a form of mental illness. I approach as a huge skeptic. I mean, this is simply not possible. Charlie, when I started this, 
To me, it could not be. This is not something that is possible. There can't be that kind of intelligence working in our universe. The fact that thousands of people are having the same images, doubting it, telling it with great emotional power, that's not the way hallucinations work. To his surprise, he quickly found in researching this topic that so-called abductees rarely exhibit any serious mental health issues like psychosis or schizophrenia, that these experiences can't simply be explained as mental illness. Secondly, he found that these UFO contact experiences were way more common than suspected, with surveys estimating that there are hundreds of thousands of experiencers in the United States alone. Furthermore, Mack was surprised to find that there is a remarkably precise correspondence and uniformity to the reports of UFO encounters from all over the world. Independently of social, cultural, religious background, people all over the globe are saying similar things about their experiences. Mack made significant contributions and had a lot to say about the transformative nature of these UFO experiences, how that affects people in their everyday lives. Unfortunately, he tragically died in a car accident, but his legacy lives on through the John Mack Institute and before his death. Him and Strassman were in contact. They were very much aware of each other's works. In fact, Mack wrote an article about Strassman's book, DMT, The Spirit Molecule. It's called Pre-Publication Comments for DMT, The Spirit Molecule, where he states, Explorers of human consciousness are discovering something of earth-shaking importance, that there exist, in Rick Strassman's words, multiple invisible realms inhabited by intelligent life forms. Strassman's important research contributes to a growing awareness that we inhabit a multidimensional universe that is far more complex and interesting than the one our scientific theories have shown us. So here we have two of the world leading experts in their respective fields saying that their two data sets are in agreement, are sharing a consistent message that reality is interdimensional and so are we, that there are otherworldly, non-physical beings, non-human intelligences that we can interact with. Now, with that context, let's return to considering the remarkable parallels between Strassman's research and Mack's research. And I'm just going to list out some of the ways that the DMT experiences from Strassman's research perfectly parallel the UFO close encounter contact or abduction experiences in Mack's research. One, as the event begins, consciousness is disturbed by a bright light humming sounds, strange bodily vibrations, or paralysis. The sense that is more real than real. Despite the obviously unexpected and bizarre nature of what they're undergoing, there is no doubt in their minds that it is really happening. The subjects in both groups know that they are not dreaming or hallucinating. There is a conviction of truth. Thirdly, consciousness separates from the body before floating or otherwise traveling into a foreign environment. Often this includes descriptions of tunnels, light, energy, and complex geometry. Fourth, upon arrival in this other place, there is a collapse of space and time, a sense of entering into another dimension or reality. Fifth, the discovery that this environment is filled with other beings or entities of various sorts. Amazingly enough, we even find the same or similar beings reported in both of these data sets, such as short gray beings, reptilians, insect-like or mantid-like beings, and beings of light or energy in both of these data sets. Six, communication takes place between the experiencer and these entities, and specifically it's telepathic communication. Seven, revelation. The experience comes with all these insights, teachings, messages. Eight, spiritual or mystical in nature, there's a feeling of sacredness. And nine, these experiences are transformational in nature. They change people's lives forever. Undeniably, it is remarkable how many specific similarities DMT and UFO experiences hold and how these leading experts are saying, look at all the ways that these two seemingly very different data sets 
parallel each other almost perfectly. So I'll ask a question I've posed many times, what are we to make of all this? At a certain point, it makes no sense to try to say that all of these experiences are hallucinations. How is it possible that all these people all over the world in these very different circumstances are hallucinating the same things? My friends, what do you make of this? Please comment down below. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. To me, it makes way more sense to postulate that there's some truth to what these people are saying, right? That we do in fact live in a multiverse, that reality is interdimensional, that there's more to the mystery of consciousness within each one of us than this physical body and physical brain, and that reality is teeming with life. We're not alone here. Hypothetically, if it is possible for us to use DMT and enter into another dimension or reality and encounter highly advanced beings there, surely it must be possible for those hyper-advanced beings to traverse in the opposite direction and enter into our reality. Could it be that that's what UFOs are is not extra planetary, but extra dimensional craft, a way for these beings to navigate and enter into this reality. And as far out there as that may sound, it's really hard to explain this evidence in any other way. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm absolutely fascinated to hear. Thank you so much for tuning in. Check me out at innervisionpsychedelics.com to learn more about my work. You can also visit me on Patreon to support this work. Thanks so much, and I'll see you back here very soon.